We will defeat you, and we will defeat you not just on the battlefield, but in the hearts and minds of the peoples of this world, and particularly people in Afghanistan. Tough talk or buying them off? Mixed messages at the London Conference on Afghanistan. Will world leaders step up pressure on President Karzai in return for their continued support? Hoping to leave Afghanistan in good hands or will the increasing foreign involvement in Afghanistan have them shoulder the burden indefinitely? This is Inside Story. Hello, I'm Sahil Rahman. More aid, more troops, more plans for Afghanistan. Were leaders from 70 nations gathered in London on Thursday, renewing the momentum towards ending the conflict in Afghanistan and rebuilding the country. It's the first big international gathering on Afghanistan since US President Barack Obama announced his military strategy last month, including a surge of 30,000 American troops. The aim is to accompany the surge with a new political strategy and ways for the Afghans to provide for their own security. With intelligence reports warning that the Taliban's influence is spreading, both aims now appear in jeopardy. The country's president, Hamid Karzai, announced a new initiative to reach out to Taliban fighters and persuade them to join the political process. We must reach out to all of our countrymen, especially our disenchanted brothers. who are not part of Al-Qaeda or other terrorist networks who accept the Afghan constitution. To do this, we will establish a National Council for Peace and Reconciliation and Reintegration, followed by a peace jirga in Afghanistan. And on the crucial issue of security and foreign forces, British Prime Minister Gordon Brown provided a timeline for the shift of responsibilities. So we will agree today that the Afghan National Army will number 134,000 by October 2010 and 171,600 by October 2011. And similarly today we will commit to supporting a police reform plan with Afghan national police numbers reaching 109,000 by October this year and 134,000 by October 2011. This will bring Afghan national security forces to 300,000 in total, a presence far bigger than our coalition forces. We need more international police trainers to do this, and we are doubling the number of military mentoring teams for the Afghan police starting in April this year. So Afghan security forces will be 300,000. International forces will rise to 135,000. But the balance will continue to shift towards Afghan security control. Well, joining me to discuss this further from Kabul, Prince Ali Siraj, a political analyst and president of the National Coalition for Dialogue with Tribes of Afghanistan. He's also a former presidential candidate. From Istanbul, we're joined by Shukriya Daraksai. She's a member of the Afghan parliament. And in Washington, D.C., we have Caroline Wadhams from the Center of American progress. Welcome to all of you and to Inside Story. Uh, Prince Ali Siraj, can I begin with you, please, sir, in Kabul? Uh, the ongoing support for Afghanistan the international community gives is encouraging, but is it the last chance uh, for Afghanistan and the international community to try and find a long-term solution, a long-term sustainable peace for the country? Well, Afghanistan is no longer an uh, isolated situation. Afghanistan's problem concerns the Central Asia and it, con it concerns the world. So we cannot just say that this is going to be the last chance. I hope that it is not the last chance and I hope that we'll continue supporting Afghanistan until the problems are resolved. But you know the thing that concerns me is that we talk about winning the hearts and minds of the people of Afghanistan, yet I don't hear anybody uh, addressing the people of Afghanistan. We talk about the Taliban, we talk about the Al-Qaeda, mm -hmm. We talk about the buildup of the troops. Everything that we are talking concerns more fighting, more money, more fighting, but it doesn't talk about what to do about winning the hearts and the minds of the people of Afghanistan. Sure. Uh, Mr. Karzai just, uh, President Karzai just stated, he did not say that he was going to make a deal with the Taliban. But he very rightfully said that he wants to reach out to the people. The, the three type of Taliban that are operating in Afghanistan, the black, the gray, and the white. The black is the one that comes from outside. This is the, the, the type of Talib and Al-Qaeda that we have to all unite as one 
to uh, avoid, uh, prevent from entering Afghanistan because these are the ones that are, they are the suicide bombers, these are the people that are creating, you know, uh, uh, making the Afghan people bleed. Indeed. Uh, so. <clears throat> I just want to try and get a general, so the, a general sense from yes. you because we're going to go into detail about the, the, the type of options that are open. I'm certainly not trying to cut you off. Caroline Wadden, can I just bring you in here about we've had, what, six conferences in, in the past nine years over Afghanistan and now we're gathered again, this time in the United Kingdom. Previously, we've seen conferences in Germany and in France. I mean, I say, is this the last chance in, a very, in the widest possible context? Because one wonders what can be done next if this doesn't work. I think this is actually one of the last chances to, to mobilize the international community um, behind a clear set of political goals. You already have publics um, in the international alliance in NATO ISAF countries that are becoming very disillusioned um, with the project um, and are wanting to uh, get troops out and um, and distance themselves from from what's happening there. So if the if the leaders cannot begin to if they at this conference cannot establish a clear set of goals um, and get the international community behind it and begin after this conference to show some progress, I think the the uh, the distancing from the from Afghanistan will be even more rapid by the publics in these countries. So it's very important. Shukriya Darakzai, you're in Istanbul. You're a member of uh, the Afghan parliament. Now, in, in Thursday's early morning comments uh, from the president in London, he's, he pointed out a six-point plan, including strengthening the arm of uh, the corruption uh, officials, uh, peace and reconciliation uh, amongst the individuals or the interested parties, obviously, in Afghanistan, and control of detention centres, just some of the issues that Karzai touched upon. There's, there's nothing new in this, though, is there? I think the today conference was one of the, um, I can't call it right now successful conference because those words which is they coming to be implemented, it's a bit difficult in those strategy. But one thing again, I got uh, an idea like it's an empty place again. Uh, no one is disagreed with one point of view and one vision for Afghanistan and as long as a different strategies and, uh, and ideas surrounding and one issue, I'm sure that long we are going far away to solve Afghanistan issue. At the meantime, I think what is really necessarily we have to do as a shared goal for Afghanistan, as a shared success for every single Afghans also want something and international community also want something. I think, uh, uh, let's say, mm, uh, playing with each other or blaming gang is not a game is not really necessarily what we really need this is the time that we should understand each other and with all these differences at least we should tackle those issues which is a similar concern among us about the corruption uh, there is a mechanism that we have to control not Af Afghan government by themselves is not only responsible at the meantime international community in international organization they also be uh, should uh, care about the transparency and accountability for the Afghan government and for our donor community back. At the meantime, aids are go not going for the demands of Afghan people. This is another critical issue. I think the aid should come what Afghans want to ask as a priority. Uh, I will blame our government on that point because they never come to be on the sitting on a driving seat. They always one, someone else should take the responsibility, but this is the time that we should also, uh, let's say, have our own shared responsibility with the international community. When it comes to reconciliation with Taliban, this is not a very, uh, let's say, simple issue. And the Afghan government, I'm sure they are not talking from the weakness point. They are talking as a democratic process. Those whom they agree with the Afghan constitution, because the constitution will have a clear map for the future, for political idea, for for how to build structure and infrastructure politically in Afghanistan and what's civil rights. Within Afghan constitution, the negotiation door must be open for everybody. But I hope the result of this conference not being like other previous conferences, which is, was about Afghanistan. I think uh, this is the time um, I agree that we don't have many chances because time to time situation are going to be worse. And this is the time 
tired nation in Afghanistan and I'm sure uh, uh, international community and those taxpayers also want to see a tangible uh, let's say progress in Afghanistan and at the meantime okay. we uh, also want I, I just wanna, to I, I, be I, on the driving seat. I see where you're coming from and I'm sure our other speakers also see where you're coming from and I want to pick up on a point that you've made and Prince Ali Siraj and I'll come back to you uh, Prince Ali Siraj you touched upon the fact that we need to talk to the uh, various interested parties within Afghanistan. Of course, the, the top point that's been discussed is, is the Taliban. You have said on many an occasion, on many news programs on Al Jazeera, that the Taliban are not a cohesive group. They are various factions, different groups, different ideologies and thoughts. So I suppose the question is, who should be talking to who and at which levels? We should be talking to the tribal elders. You know, uh, I'm very, very distressed when I hear you know, about uh, trying to uh, come up with solutions for Afghanistan, and, and they, they sort of go around, 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 completely disregarding the people of Afghanistan. They want to talk to the Taliban, they want to talk to uh, the Al-Qaeda, they want to talk to XYZ, but nobody talks about t uh, talking to the tribal elders, to the tribes in Afghanistan. For God's sake, historically, the tribes of Afghanistan have always defended Afghanistan against its enemies. If the Taliban and the Al-Qaeda are in Afghanistan as enemy, then therefore there's the enemy of the people. The people are ready to sit down with the Afghan government. The people are ready to sit down with the coalition to form a, 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 a group of uh, uh, um, a, a group together so that together they can come up with a solution to the problems. The Taliban that are Afghans, uh, I do not refer to them as Talib. I, call, I refer to these people as, as disenchanted Afghans. We can, we can bring him into the fold, but the way we're going to bring him into the fold is that we cannot go into the forest and into the mountains, into the deserts and get on a horn and blow the horn and say, hey, Ahmad Mahmoud or Abdul, come over to the table, let us talk. You cannot, you cannot, you do not even know who they are. You don't even know their numbers. Uh, the best thing to do is to sit down with the tribal elders. Each tribe, these Afghans that are fighting inside Afghanistan, they belong to a tribe. The tribe has a, an, a, a circle of elders, religious elders, tribal elders. Let us hold them responsible for the action of their, the members of their tribe yeah. and move in that direction. So long as we disregard the people of Afghanistan, we are not going to succeed in Afghanistan, unfortunately. Okay, I'm going to come to uh, Caroline Wadhams in a moment because I just want to give some background for our viewers who may not be completely up to speed on the subject because right from the start, dealing with the Taliban in Afghanistan has been quite a daunting task. As the security forces continue to strike fighters in several areas of the country, alternative approaches have been explored, including reconciliations through negotiations. Now, the Afghan government has repeatedly promised to politically involve Taliban fighters if they renounce violence and return to the negotiating table. And to that end, Karzai has been persuading the UN and the international community to show leniency towards Taliban members he could possibly negotiate with. On Wednesday, the UN Security Council panel removed five senior Taliban officials from its blacklist. And in addition, a peace and reintegration fund has been set up to lure Taliban fighters who join out of poverty rather than ideology. Uh, Caroline Wadhams, uh, Prince Ali Siraj you know, it has a point about the way perhaps the Afghan government and even international uh, governments have been trying to bring in or talk to the interested parties. How far has this failed in the past and, and who do you think could really make the breakthrough if we entrust everything, for example, to Hamid Karzai at the moment? Sh should he be the one, as he is the president of Afghanistan, to, to lead uh, by example, if, if that's the possible way of saying it, and, and the Americans, the international community should follow? Well, the... the Reconciliation or reintegration with the Taliban insurgents has been tried for years, but it has, there's never been a, a real plan. There's never been a good process, and there's never been any funding behind it. So there's they've been the the government and the the NATO NATO has not been able to offer anything in terms of security or in terms of incentives. So it's there's been a lot of rhetoric about reconciliation for years, but there's really been nothing behind it as an as as a real option. 
now everyone seems to be getting behind the idea. The problem is um, that the, the insurgency believes that it's winning, that the United States and the international community is about to leave and that they're desperately looking for an exit. And so now you have President Karzai and others talking about we're going to fund this, we're going to provide security, but they're also talking about reconciliation with top leaders of the Taliban. So there, there are obvious tensions. If you're going to reintegrate certain communities, bring them back into the fold, and at the same time you're going to reconcile with senior leaders, there could be real contradictions in that. Um, the, 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 other, the other problem is that the, the way that the international community and that President Karzai is doing it right now is they're going to try to offer jobs, money, um, protection. If it is seen, though, as a... Uh, a, a pro-American or a pro-NATO kind of arrangement where people believe that they are joining the, the foreign occupiers by reintegrating, then it's going to be, it's not going to work. Mm. It has to be an Afghan-led process. And President Karzai is the leader of Afghanistan, and so it needs to be the person driving it. But because of his lack of legitimacy, it, it obviously poses huge problems about being able to bring people over. Um, I'll, I'll leave it there. Yeah, cool. Sh shukriya. Um, Darek Zai uh, in Istanbul. That's another point, really, isn't it, about uh, Hamid Karzai's credibility and, and strength within government? Because if I can just quote uh, Mohammed Ibrahim Ghesmi, he's a, he's a member of Afghan parliament. He's a bit of a skeptic. He's adamant uh, and says, and I paraphrase, that the Taliban want total control. Uh, and it's a battle, really, that's not only fought outside of parliament but within parliament because you as parliamentarians all differ on how to tackle this particular issue. I think the reconciliation is not on the end of Afghan parliament, it's not the end of the Afghan government. This is the nation demand. Why we came and we reached to that point, three decades war was enough for us and we pay a lot of life and therefore we want to close the chapter of killing war or fighting under any name. Can you buy loyalty to Afghanistan? Can you buy um, a heartfelt sincerity towards your own country by buying loyalty as this particular conference may end up with that Nothing. sort of conclusion? Uh, I think we don't want to buy anything. We want to build a political procedure with the name of democracy that everyone as an Afghan citizen should join the procedure. We are not talking about the individuals. And I'm really against those ideas, which is people believe with the money we can buy people, we can bring Taliban back to stop violence. I have a few comments about the West Prince Ali Sarraj said. We don't have any problem with our tribe leaders. Although Taliban had always creating problem, they are killing our tribe leaders in different parts of the country. At the meantime, today Taliban is not only a Taliban, which is I can call them that ideologically they are stop starting war or they are um, ideologically want to be in a political power. There are six categories from my point of view, which is these three six label need a different work. For instance, those whom they don't have any job and they believe that it's easy to go and join the insurgents group and making a good money at least for three times food for their own kids in remote areas and districts. Uh, we can ask them for the reconciliation, we can bring them on the system, we can provide them job facilities as a government of Afghanistan. The second category, which is most of them, they are making easy money with the money which is UK and uh, Americans are paying for local commanders. Um, they want to fight against Taliban and the local uh, areas, so therefore we have to stop such a kind of fight, uh, funding as well, because uh, the system itself will bring more or creating more problems at the uh, local areas. The third type of category, Taliban, there's a, a commanders, local commanders, which is they was unhappy from the government. Today we don't have only Taliban, uh, which is they uh, ideologically Taliban, which is they are fighting against the government. There are some people within a government, sure. they are also against the government as well. Um, the fourth category, which is I do believe, there's a a free land of heroin and there's a making a large number of money every single he year. Well, so the, I think the, the narcotics but business also create, so uh, I, uh, if you allow me I will, okay, just very quickly, I, I, I want to get into, yeah please do, carry on. 
the the the, the narcotics uh, business also make uh, and support the a kind of insecurity to be in the places in particular in Helmand provinces. Uh, if if you go and see the situation, particularly financially situation, uh, Taliban in Helmand is quite different than Taliban in Gizab district, which is Gizab district was one of the district. Even the first presidential election was impossible mm. there. There was in the control of Taliban. These Taliban are facing uh, extremely poverty, but the Helmand Taliban they are rich enough. So we have to stop such a business as well uh, with the international, um, uh, let's say, aid uh, with uh, with our joint effort. The fifth category, okay. ideologically, I, th I think we get. I think, I think we get the. I think we get the gist, Miss Miss uh, Miss Darukza, I think we get the gist. Uh, Prince Ali Siraj, can I come in here? Uh, various categories which you discussed of of the type of ide ideology uh, so, some of those that follow uh, the Taliban or not uh, have, but um, how. Uh, significant is it that the president is talking about sitting down having a peace and reconciliation council and he'll talk to everybody I mean would you agree with that and would you bring into this mix people like Mullah Omar if he's still alive or if he's still available and wants to talk uh, to the government and to groups of tribal elders in <coughs> Afghanistan well, first of all, uh, these uh, four or five individuals that have been uh, taken off the blacklist, uh, their uh, authority over what goes on inside Afghanistan can fit in a thimble. They have no authority, they have no influence. And Mullah Omar, the same way, has no influence within what's happening inside Afghanistan uh, among the Afghan Talibs, if we can call them Talibs. Uh, offering money to buy is the worst, the worst uh, the decision that anybody can make. Today I had some tribal elders from Farah and from Herat who came to my house and they were laughing at this suggestion. You know, these tribal elders, very prominent elders, they said, you know, if they're offering money, then I will go put on my black turban and go to the mountains and say, I'm a Talib, give me some money. Hmm. All they're doing by offering money is they're increasing the, you know, the, the number of people who will jump onto the bandwagon and say, I'm a Talib, I'm a Talib, give me some money and I will not fight. What guarantee does anybody have that even if we pay the Taliban, first of all, you don't have enough money in the world to buy all the Taliban because the minute you start paying, you're going to have people pouring into Afghanistan from Pakistan, from Saudi Arabia, from all over the place, calling themselves Taliban to stand in line to get the money. Wrong idea. The uh, situation, I totally believe with Mr. Karzai, I agree with him, to call a Loy Jirga, but the Loy Jirga should be not the members of the Taliban. The Loy Jirga should pertain to the tribal elders, uh, to the religious elders, bring them all under one tent, mm -hmm. invite the coalition, let's, let us together formulate a peace plan. I guarantee you, and I can assure you, because I am the president of the National Coalition for Dialogue with the Tribes of Afghanistan, I talk to my people on a daily basis. They are ready to sit down and talk to the coalition. They are ready to sit down with the government, but somebody's got to pay attention to them. Somebody's got to listen to them. We talk about winning hearts and minds of the people, yet we, the, we, we say that. The word, that word is very easy. It sounds sure. beautiful, winning the hearts and minds of the people. But nothing is being done to win the hearts and minds of the people. Every action that's being taken, it's avoiding the people and going towards the Taliban and the Al-Qaeda and, 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 and the other situations. Please, I mean, if you want, the solution to Afghanistan is not as complicated okay. as the world is making it. Um, uh, okay, Caroline we Wattons. are a tribal nation. Sorry, sorry, Prince uh, uh, Ali Siraj. I just want to come finally to uh, Caroline Adams for a final comment. I mean, this all plays into the hands uh, of what you've heard now from what from uh, Kabul and in Istanbul to the fact that uh, the elections now have been postponed. Perhaps that's just a symptom of how weak President Karzai is, how weak the government is. It's practically um, uh, half a cabinet was elected only recently, uh, uh, and how much sway he has in the next few months post this conference, whether he can succeed. It's, gonna, it's going to be very difficult, and the international community has clearly not helped the situation. Um, we have, uh, the United States and, and other countries have not empowered uh, President Karzai, and we have not, for many, many years, have not focused on actually state building. We've often bypassed him. Um, he clearly has problems. He has not been effective. But we do, the you know, international community does bear some responsibility in this. Now, the Obama administration has just released their stabilization strategy for Afghanistan and Pakistan, which is a civilian strategy. And it's a different kind of focus than what we've seen in the past. It's a much, much greater focus on building state institutions, mm -hmm. at changing some of the problems in the way that we've been interacting in approaching the international, uh, approaching Afghanistan, in, instead of, for example, putting uh, most of our aid money through foreign contractors. More yeah. of the money would be going 
through the the central government um, with greater monitoring. So there are there's a recognition that uh, that the president Karzai is weak, but there are attempts by the international community to begin changing the dynamic that we've had for so many years to start improving the situation. But it's it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough, and I'm afraid. We have to leave it. I'd like to thank all of my guests, Prince Ali Siraj in Kabul, Shukriya Daraksai in Istanbul, and Caroline Wadhams in Washington. I'm afraid that's where we have to leave it. Uh, thank you for watching this edition of Inside Story. Bye-bye.